Hunting big game can be slow and steady or fast and furious. This morning, it's the latter. I'm just struggling to get this back on. It's quite know. light, isn't it? It's really light, yeah. There's, um, there's no mod on this, obviously. So no, you... <laughs> so Daylight. It's actually quite light, I'm saying. I think meant the rifle at light. <laughs> Like Kai that. needs venison for his game cooking business well, and wants to show us a no frills burger recipe from the venison he's already taken off this ground. We've got our timing's a bit wrong, it's a bit light, isn't it? Yeah, I've been out in about two weeks really because uh, it's been so busy with work and other things that life gets in the way, doesn't it? But it's coming towards the end of the season, so the does um, at the end of the month uh, they'll be out of season, so we're really trying to press on for them now to try and get those numbers down bucks too, maybe some young bucks. There's plenty in this area. I've seen a lot of deer around at the moment. So um, in fact, we're just in a group about 400 yards in the other field, I'm trying to faff around and get everything ready. <laughs> so hopefully uh, they'll still be there. The other thing is dog walkers. If you don't get on it quick, they're going to push them along. So um, we best get going. Kai is a thermal devotee. In his eyes, he is just being efficient. Time is money, and a thermal doesn't guarantee success. It's still there. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick to the side here on the right. It's a perfect little vantage point in that little spinny of woodland there. So we go in there, and then hopefully the wind won't turn too much. That's the problem. I can feel the top of my face. It's going down that way, but they're just straight ahead. So let's try and get it on them. Second from the front, your head eating is it stretching out now? That's a good start, isn't it? Really nice group of deer there, actually, and um, really nice. And uh, this moved over to the right. I would have taken another one, but all I could see was the white one and. There's not many white ones, and we like, like I said before, I like to keep them around for two reasons. The reason number one would be because the locals like them, so I keep them happy, don't upset them. Reason number two is they're quite easy to spot the rest of the herd as well. So when I was driving this morning, I could see little flecks of white. I could see that there was a group there, and that's the white one helps. So I'm trying to locate it now, so obviously it might have been here and then yes yeah, there right underneath there <laughs> it's amazing isn't it even with <laughs> it's, it's 10 yards away from us even with the thermal sometimes like if it goes if it falls in a dip you can't see it but it's like literally yeah 10 yards in front of us not too bad at all you've been using that rifle quite a bit then you've been to ireland haven't you yeah yeah absolutely yes so this was the first invite i had down in um killarney and what absolute stunning part of the world like if you haven't been you really need to go and I went with the guys from the Levenses Distillery and the new distillery, North Wales uh, Gin Distillery. Absolutely fantastic gin. I've sampled maybe a couple of <laughs> bottles already since I got back. Gin's normally a summer drink for me, but um, in the evening pushing I've been... Pushing through, are you? Pushing through to... Uh... Well, yeah, you know, a little bit of market research and stuff and see what <laughs> recipes I can do. It's all part of it, isn't it? Nice young male. Good one to take. We said we're going to take some of the young males or some of the does and then yeah I mean look at that exactly where I was aiming at that rifle so 
very, very pleased with that. That's going to make exceptional eating as well. So I'll dress this one out, get it in the truck, and then um, back in the larder. I've got this uh, custom Mark Zabrowski knife, perfect size for doing deer. I'll put my finger on the edge for when I'm doing the growlicking. I don't like a knife too big when I'm out deer stalking. Uh, you know, size isn't everything. <laughs> While cleaning the young buck, an inquisitive dog walker asks what we're up to. We didn't feel it appropriate to film it, but Kai did his best to build bridges with friendly chat and with the offer of some free venison next time he's passing. As hunters, we are extremely fortunate to be able to do what we do. And, and I think a big part of that for us is we have to share that with people. There's houses around on the farm here that they ask me what I'm doing and I'll explain to them the full story. And then I say, look, I'll, I'll bring some venison around for you to try. Is that so you don't forget your name? Yeah, in big silver letters. I got this at Black Deer Festival last year, so I did a chef's demo on the, on the big stage. A lot of these people come from London and other places, but the venison sales outsold the lamb. It was sponsored by Yeti, and I got this really nice gift. So yeah, I'm not going to forget my name now. <laughs> it's time to turn a No Frills fallow stalk into that No Frills burger. This recipe is so, I can't, I can't tell you how simple this is. Salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, that's it. No frills, but incredibly tasty. So all I'm gonna do is get my mince, add some black pepper. Now this just enhances the, the, the flavor of the venison, so there's nothing in there that's gonna mask the flavor of the venison. It's so mild fallow anyway, that it's, a lot of people think they're eating very lean beef. A little glug of olive oil. And that's it. Through the mincer once, salt, pepper, and that is it. What I'm going to do then is just put them into balls the size of um... <laughs> There's always innuendos when we're doing these type of things. Why well, you just finish your sentence, balls the size of... I was thinking, it's not a squash ball, it's not a tennis ball. But the, I'm, I'm trying to think what it is. But I, I was trying to think at the same time, it's like, <laughs> what could I relate it to? I mean, what, what could I... I <laughs> <laughs> Balls the no, size of bullocks. I'm not sure, it's, sort of slightly, it's between a squash ball and a. I yeah. Know, a yeah. Ball maybe. Well, there we go. <laughs> so, this is 500 grams, right? So, we can probably get one of like four, four burgers out of that easy. So, I'm just uh, heating up the pan now. These are really good pan. These are Netherton Foundry, handmade in Shropshire. I can use them on the fire as well. They're thin, spun iron pans. They're absolutely gorgeous. And for the price, they're very reasonable. What is reasonable for a handmade pan? 60, 70 quid a pan. I love cast iron. I've got cast iron lodge pans over there. But these are kind of almost the same, but thinner and lighter, easier on the wrists, so. Now I like to taste the buns. It gives that extra bit of texture. So when you put in your sauce on as well, it sits on it, it doesn't absorb into the bun. So you've got to crisp the top, put it on, and it just sits nicely on the burger. The trick is with these burgers, the reason why they work is because it's going to be thin, right? So if you did it thick, because it hasn't got much fat content in there, like pork fat or anything else like that, then that would dry out if it was thicker. But with these, literally, like that, not perfectly round, doesn't matter, we're not looking for perfection. Um, I think the term is rustic, isn't it? So pop that on there like that. And not only that, this is except like so quick as well. So these have literally been on there for a couple of minutes now. So I'm gonna just turn that over. And then I'm gonna just put some pancetta over it. So you can use bacon, you can use ham. So it's not pretty, literally just, just place it over there. And then this is a trick. So gal does, it melts really, really well. So you can get your, your kind of nice cheap burger cheese. It's all got place, it's delicious. But gouda, something a bit richer and a bit kind of, um, a bit more special, to place the gouda on there. Now one thing I haven't got is a lid for this, but I'll use my lodge lid just to steam that for about a minute. And what that's gonna do then, it's gonna create some steam and it's gonna melt the cheese over the pancetta. Are you drooling it? <laughs> I can see it. I've been drooling since the, since the field. Now this is probably the most complicated part, but this is not necessary. This is a very easy way of making a really good quality burger sauce um, from scratch. You can skip this, you can put ketchup in, you can put mustard or whatever, but this is the bit that, you know, literally it's got more ingredients than anything else. So 
I'm going to go for mayonnaise. So I would say two thirds mayonnaise, a third ketchup, um, a little splash of lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, a bit of pepper, and a little pinch of paprika. And lastly, what I like to put in this is just some, you can use Dijon, you can use um, whole grain, you can use any type of mustard if you want it's something a bit more pokey, use um, English, but this is French's American mustard. It's mild, I'm not a massive fan of mustard myself, so it works quite well for me. Mix that in. So you can see that cheese has melted beautifully on these burgers. Look at that. Oh my god. You can go to any of these kind of fine dining, fancy burger restaurants if you've got a five guys, you've got a buyer and all. But these will just be on par, I promise you. Shall we do the half? There we go. And you just look at that. Honestly, it is unreal, so I need to try this. You could not tell that was venison from beef. Excuse me. For more information about Kai's cooking, go to gameandflames.com and for more about the Bergara Crest, go to ruag.co.uk.